Here we are once again with another Battle Bots review. Now, I apologize that this one was delayed, but it's finally here. Let's get started. Now, right off the bat, that mini bot charity intro was hilarious. The fact that Battle Bots took how so many mini bots get decimated every season and made it this whole charity style intro was great. Going that extra mile just to entertain us on something that really we would never have even thought about this. That's what I love about Battle Bots. Uh, but with that out of the way, we move on to the first fight of the night between Black Dragon and Monsoon. Now, I knew this was going to be awesome right out of the gate. Between the ground clearance of Black Dragon and the reach of Monsoon, this could go either way. Now, Black Dragon was looking very good with two nice long wedgelets, which I knew was there to try and help them with getting under Monsoon. And I imagine also to help with the reach due to Monsoon coming down with an almighty spinning bar. Now, I mentioned that Bloodsport has a brilliant spinning bar itself, that thick key or whatever it was. But Monsoon looks like it's got a sp a, an equatable spinning bar of its own. That thing looks like it could do some serious damage. Now, right out of the gate, there were some nice hits at first, which Black Dragon got the better of, but Monsoon kept working. Black Dragon then weapon then started having some issues, and Monsoon went and ripped off one of their wedgelets and then got another big hit in. Then after taking another wedgelet out, they got a massive hit in. It really was looking bad for Black Dragon at this point. Monsoon was delivering some almighty shots and looked like they were closing in on the win. Black Dragon was still working though, though their drive was looking pretty rough. However, Monsoon's weapon seemed to have stopped working at this point. So then we got some massive hits from Black Dragon. Monsoon eventually, after getting stuck, they were counted out. Overall, I'd say this was a pretty solid opening fight, where it genuinely looked like it could have gone either way. If Monsoon's weapon hadn't have given up, they might have been able to take Black Dragon out. And in fact, later on in the episode, it looks like that would have been the case, as it looked like they were about to take out one of the motors of Black Dragon. So Monsoon came so close to knocking out Black Dragon. Black Dragon, however, one of the hardiest spinners I've ever seen, able to take so much abuse and was able to keep going until they got the win, showing that even when they're not at 100%, they are ones to fear. Now, I gotta say, on an off note, when it comes to hardy spinners, I gotta say, I'd love to see Black Dragon versus Death Roll. That would be fun. That would be a lot of fun. Now, looking at the schedules, I gotta say that Black Dragons looks tough, but doable. If they can dish out some major hits, they'll put up one hell of a fight, especially as we know Black Dragon can deal with a lot of damage, so a fight against Riptide is one that I've got my eye on in particular. Monsoon's schedule, meanwhile, also looks very fun. Matches against Death Roll, which that, with those two long-reaching spinners, could be brilliant, should be some massive impacts there. And a fight against Whiplash, though, could be a problem based on this, this initial performance. I feel like Whiplash, they could deal with some of those shots and might be able to outdo Monsoon there. But I'm a lot more confident in their fight against Horizon. Monsoon has the potential to do pretty well this season. Next up was Emulsifier versus Malice. And I can tell you, right as I saw that fight, I was worried for Malice. Emulsifier, with that sturdy wedge was and that big, powerful weapon, I just feared for Malice in this case. And Malice came out with those forks. Emulsifier came out same as it was before. And I felt those forks were going to be Malice's best chance here, as they would help to get under the robot. Starting off, there were some nice hits from Emulsifier, followed by a huge collision as they sent Malice flying once again, and then Malice got stuck on the pulverizer. Meanwhile, Emulsifier ended up upside down. Emulsifier ends up freeing Malice, but a loose piece of Malice's frame has them only barely moving, just barely avoiding being counted out. However, while I was focused on Malice being stuck on that bit of the frame that had been bent out of place by Emulsifier's almighty shot, it turned out Emulsifier had stopped moving at all. I gotta say, this was a shocking result. A bit disappointing as the fight stopped just as it was getting good, and had it continued, I think this could have been a very memorable fight. But I've gotta give congrats to Malice for hanging on. 
as once again we see that durability and reliability can decide a fight. However, I gotta say, even though Emulsifier lost, it looked mean with the damage they did to the frame of Malice. So far we're seeing two mean vertical spinners come close to victory, then fall short to hardier robots. Next up we had Overhaul versus Starchild, and I thought that Overhaul was done for. I mean, how are they gonna grapple a robot like Starchild? Also, Chris, please don't make me sad by saying stuff like, what the heck is a Thwackbot? That was just depressing. We need more Thwackbots. Anyway, we get a promo video about Starchild, where they bring up inspiration from robots like the Master, which is such a cool thing to see. It's nice to see that even nowadays, these old designs still inspire. On top of that, the Wildbots throughout the episode brings up Beetleweight events that inspired several teams, which again is extremely cool. They even brought up how Jason Marston was part of international competition. You know, I'm not going to mention Robot Wars by name, of course. But I love that BattleBots is willing to acknowledge the team's other ventures. It helps with people who maybe don't know what these teams have done. You know, some people only watch BattleBots. So to know that these people aren't rookies and know what they're doing and are more capable than you think, I think that is an extremely good way of going about things. Anyway, the buzzer sounds and immediately, I gotta say, we got a good lift from Overhaul. There was a lot of missed thwacks from Starchild. And then we got some more good lifts from Overhaul as, as Starchild just started flailing around. Eventually, Overhaul managed to hook the wheel and took Starchild into the screws. Overhaul then fully grabs Starchild and lifts them up in the air for a suplex. The force of which even tips them upside down, which was incredible. There was a, f and once again, there was just a few more glancing blows from Starchild, but this fight easily was given by the judges to Overhaul. And I've got to say, I massively underestimated Overhaul this time. This has to have been Overhaul's best performance to date. An incredible display right there. Overall, I thought this was a surprisingly good fight. I don't know if it was the match of the night because I really wanted to see what Starchild was capable of and I just didn't get that, but we're really getting to see grabbers and lifters come up to the forefront here and show that they still have a lot of fight in this game. Of course, vertical spinners are the meta of BattleBots. They're clearly the ones in the, uh, with the biggest advantage, but to see grabbers and lifters aren't going away quietly and are really gonna give all these different robots a hard time, that's great fun to see. Now overhaul schedule does look rough. Robots like Claw Viper seem way too fast and aggressive, and I was on about Verts, Cobalt is a robot where if it doesn't go sh overhaul's way, they might get split in half. Shredder Bro seems like their best chance as Shredder Bro doesn't have low ground clearance. Now Star Child schedule on the, me on the other hand looks like a lot of fun. They're going up against less conventional designs, in my opinion, that could lead to some very fun fights. If they can get their driving in order, they might have a solid chance too, but we'll have to wait and see. Next up was Gruff vs Quantum, a fight that I was very curious to see how it would go. As Quantum we know is the big killing crusher, but Gruff is a brick. It endures so much punishment and could take control of the fight. And better yet, Adam Wrigley comes to join the commentary team. I'm so glad that they're sticking with this as a running theme. It's so fun to watch the builders weigh in and on these robots that they're getting to watch fight. Now Gruff comes down and it has some special attachments. On the sides they've got these little bars which I think were to try and stop the jaws from crushing down as well as a lift bit on the front which apparently was to hook the tooth of Quantum. Basically they don't need to get underneath Quantum's wedge they just need to get within the mouth and then lift up the up, lift up quantum by the upper jaw. That was actually a very interesting strategy, and I could have. And when I saw it, I thought, "Dang, if that works, quantum's not going to stand a chance." Quantum, meanwhile, decided to go with this singular tooth, which I believe is slightly bigger. So I have to imagine they're doing this to get deeper into Gruff and get more damage. The match begins and immediately Quantum gets around Gruff and bites in and starts pushing Gruff around so easily. They let go and then go in for some more and Gruff already is struggling. The stuff on the side easily buckling under the crushing power, that didn't do a single thing. 
There was a nice lift, but they weren't able to make much of it as Quantum then puts them on the upper deck. Gruff's drive scene seems to be damaged and it's clearly going downhill fast for this normally very durable robot. It seems that Gruff is only trying to avoid further damage at this point as Quantum is super aggressive, going in for more bite and shoving them all around the battle box. Gruff is flailing around, begins to start smoking and is struggling to do anything at this point. They break the arena sign in their panic it seems. Eventually the drive seems to completely go from Gruff just before one final massive bite from Quantum really sinking its teeth in. Gruff in a really rare situation has been supremely badly damaged. Count it out, this was another incredible win for Quantum. I don't think I've seen Gruff this badly damaged even when it fought robots like Tombstone. This was a brilliantly fun match, if a little one-sided. For fans of Quantum like me, this was super super fun to see and another incredible display from them and shows that it wasn't a fluke when they beat Shredderator so handily. Gruff sadly got nothing in and for fans of Gruff I could see this being a disappointing fight but overall I really enjoyed how tough they were throughout keeping them going for way longer than you think they would have. Next up though was Kraken vs Beta. Kraken coming out with its new design. I'm sad to see Kraken lose its crushes, to be honest, but I can understand why they've gone with the hammer saw design, and to give them credit, it still has a lot of that Kraken spirit in its appearance, so I can't be too hard on it. Beta, meanwhile, has a comes out with a different, almost reminiscent of four in its hammer. It's incredibly thin and it looks like it would make it more trigger happy but I was, uh, call me a psychic, but I could see that it was going to get badly damaged just right from, from the get go. The match begins and immediately you could see a difference in Beta's driving as they start swinging that hammer much more openly. This is what we've been waiting for from Beta. Beta, one of the most powerful hammers in BattleBots history, and we have been dying to get to see that power in use. The ground clearance goes back and forth, my guess is because neither of them have hinged wedgelets, so it actually is just down to just where the wedges are positioned at the time. We get a massive hit from Kraken, and Beta immediately seems like they're in major trouble as their mobility gets massively hindered. Kraken gets some nice hits on the weaker backside before Beta finally gets moving again, though they're clearly struggling for a bit. Kraken, however, also seems to be having some driving issues. I believe they had some issues. I believe the team Kraken actually brought this up on their Instagram. Um, check out the teams, by the way. They actually go very in depth into some of these issues that they end up having with their robots. What goes right, what goes wrong. If you go on BattleBots.com, you actually get a nice list of most, if not all, of their social medias. Do check that out. But they did have some issues, clearly, with their driving. There were some nice hits from both. There were some nice hits. When then the spinner massively warped Beta's hammer. That thing was, looked so ridiculous. It was completely bent out of shape. And when I thought the hammer was out of commission, no, 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 no. They kept firing the hammer. In fact, they were more trigger happy. They were firing that hammer like nothing else. That was going down like crazy. I love this comeback from Beta. It was very close. I thought Kraken had done enough, but the judges went for Beta. While I didn't expect them to go for Beta, I have to say I do still respect the decision. This was incredibly close. What an on and off fight, honestly. There was definitely an off period where these bots were clearly struggling to just get the offense in that they wanted, but when they were going, they were going strong. Kraken's new weapon is incredibly powerful, such a delight to see, and Beta far more aggressive. I have been begging for this. We've, I think a lot of us have been begging for Beta to really get more aggressive, to get those good hits in, and my god, have they finally delivered. Thank you, Beta. Please keep it up. Now looking at the schedules, Kraken's looks challenging. A lot of robots that if they perform well, they could stand a solid chance against, but the tide could really turn on them if they don't. Their weapon power, in my opinion, though, gives them a solid chance here, because that thing really does leave some massive shots on its opponents. Beta's schedule also looks quite tough, but it looks like a lot of fun. Could lead to some massive fights and some incredible wins that I think, due to the challenge, 
could help them get a shot of going further in the tournament. You know, say they beat robots like Bloodsport. I mean, given Bloodsport's track record, that could give Beta a very good reason to go much, to be allowed further into the tournament. So good luck to them. Next, we have the main event hype package. It's a really good hype package of two teams that are up against the odds. They both need to dust themselves off and pick up a win. But paradoxically, while they're, because they are both so proven to be such ex excellent teams, it makes it extremely difficult because, well, they're up against another extremely good robot. So, honestly, I was excited to see how that would go. However, first up, we had to have Shredder Bro versus Horizon. Oh dear. Now the match begins and there's some very slow spin-ups to start off with. Some small bumps from Shredder Bro, a glancing blow from Horizon. The Horizon is clearly not getting much weapon speed in. Shredder Bro starts struggling with its drive. Horizon really does seem to be struggling as well. Shredder Bro then starts spinning that drum up as fast as it can. You can really start to hear that death hum coming into play but still struggling with the movement. Horizon is just not being aggressive, likely due to the weapon problems. And then, as they come it close, a massive hit from Shredder Bro, as we finally get to see the power of this drum spinner. Horizon, for a moment, looked like it was gonna be stuck, but due to the special design, Horizon gets itself free. Which honestly, that was a very clever case with the design as it is. Now Shredder Bro gets another hit in, which pops Horizon on top of Shredder Bro, which normally wouldn't be a problem, but due to the drive issues, they ended up getting stuck. It ends up going to Shredder Bro, likely from that one major hit, giving them some very good damage points. Guys, this fight sucked. <laughs> I hate to say it, I like to try and look at things positively. Like, even the lowliest robot, the robot that dies in one hit, I couldn't make that. I couldn't make Chrome fly. <laughs> I'm s like, I like, I don't like to be harsh because I know that these robots take so much time, so much effort, and it just this fight was bad. This fight was so bad. It was just it was easily the worst fight of the season so far. Both robots were clearly plagued by some issues. I really, really hope that they can work on it and bounce back into a more entertaining battle than their next fight, because this just was boring. Now, Shredder Bro's schedule is one that I think will really put them through their paces, each of which will really catch Shredder Bro out if they can't work out their drive by then, as all are extremely well-driven robots. Horizon's schedule, in my opinion, is insurmountable. They're up against some very powerful robots, so I think what they need to do is show some of the potential of this design and go out swinging. If they can leave a mark before their exit, I think that will still be a job well done, even if they go 0 and 4. Now, the main event had me nervous and excited. Obviously, Whiplash, an incredibly well driven robot that had some issues in its last fight, versus Hypershock, a robot with an exceptional amount of power, but when flipped over could end up really struggling to drive the robot to a win. Now Whiplash came out with some nice long forks to help them with ground clearance. I noticed they still had their Vert attach, which I knew would be helpful in trying to claw back some damage points if it went to the judges. Now the match begins and immediately Whiplash rushes over. Hypertruck tries to get round, but a nice lift from Whiplash tips them over. I was so excited, I thought, Oh my goodness, this one is already off to the races. Hypershock tries flipping themselves over, and with a boost from Whiplash, gets moved to the upper deck. Night, as set. Then there's a nice shot from Hypershock as they try to keep going, before finally flipping back over. Then we get some really nice hot shots from Hypershock as they begin to turn the tide. This immediately means that they get into the driver's seat. Whiplash now on the defensive. Whiplash is flailing and gets hit with a pulverizer. A small driving error from Hypershock, but Whiplash can't do enough to make much of it. One last massive hit from Hypershock causes the guts to spill out of Whiplash. Hypershock's Drisk Spinner does a number as Whiplash smokes up the arena looking like a YouTube barbecue video. That was a brilliant main event. I gotta say, both robots got some nice shots in. We gotta see Whiplash get some nice lifts in. Hypershock with that powerful spinner though. 
once it got control, it was all over. Still, Whiplash never gave up, and it made for a brilliant fight between two main eventers. Overall, I'd say that this was a still a pretty good episode. Fights, sure, Shredded Bro and Horizon was definitely a low point for the season, but when you've got fights like Monsoon versus Black Dragon, Beta versus Kraken, you know, Overhaul's performance against Star Child, you know, as well as the main event, I still say that there's enough to love about this episode that I'd still recommend people watch it if they can. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified of future videos on the channel. Leave a comment and tell me what you thought of the episode. You know, whether you agree, whether you disagree, I always like hearing what people's opinions are on the episode. Maybe you loved Shredded Bro vs Horizon and you could tell me why you loved it. But with that being said, I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!